Well, good evening once again. I um, had a wonderful uh, time being away and have been back in the office for a few days. And uh, before I um, went uh, away on vacation, I had said that when I come back, I anticipated that um, Pennsylvania, at least our part, would be in green. It is. And I wanted to focus on getting us all back uh, together as reasonably and safely as possible. And so I would therefore not be doing these uh, devotions. Uh, but as we as a church continue to look at what the timing of coming back together might look like, uh, it, it may take the better part of the next month uh, or so, at least as the AEM, uh, for us to gather again for the, for the Chinese uh, worship service. There's no timetable yet, though uh, I suspect that's going to be more late summer, early fall in terms of initial attempts to, to start to have live worship with people besides the worship team. Um, and for the AEM, as I said, that is looking like perhaps sometime over the course of the next month. We will keep you uh, posted via various announcements, etc. But since we will be um, quarantined still, and, and who knows with the various um, uh, cases spiking throughout the country and even just a tad here in Pennsylvania, if we'll go back into a yellow mode or something like that. So while I probably won't be posting every day, uh, I will try to post as often as I can. And um, I may be doing that more from inside than outside since it is smoking hot outside. And, uh, and here I am sitting in the shade. Anyway, what I want to do is draw our attention to Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 uh, this evening. And there we have uh, the Lord saying that uh, to the one who overcomes and is dressed in white garment white garments he will not blot out their name from the book of life i have been very disheartened like many of you um lately as as we've looked at various articles and happenings on the internet in particular where you know for the past oh gosh i don't know certainly months um at least it, it seems to have bloomed in a not so good way over the past few months. We've been witnessing the the full onslaught of the so-called cancel culture. And the cancel culture basically works like this. I write something online with which you disagree. And instead of having a, um, I'll just say it, a grown-up conversation um, or just scrolling past whatever I've written with the person who um, has offended you and, and I'll say against whom you've taken offense. Um, instead of just scrolling past his or her writings, you not only feel the need to comment back, uh, what we call trolling, or um, if you don't write back, you feel the need to go further and uh, that is call the person out repost what they've written, spread it around the internet, and then try to cancel them. That is, get them fired, slander, demean, spread um, false reports about them, etc. And we've been seeing this happen to people left and right. And the, the story that caught my eye, if you remember during some of the rioting that was taking place out in California, there was a young woman um, 21, 22, uh, she stopped as, uh, someone was boarding up their business in anticipation of the riots. And it looked like she stopped for a photo op to grab the, um, uh, the drill gun. And she kind of held it up like, Hey, I'm helping, you know, drill this into the wall. She got a photo op and then she got into her car and drove away. And she was slammed for, um, trying to take advantage of the opportunity, white privilege, you know, all of the catchwords today. And um, I 
read an interview with her yesterday. This is now weeks after this happened. And I'm glad she's speaking up. Uh, she's actually a journalist. She was canceled out of getting her internship for the summer, but she was canceled for her own safety because um, she was actually apparently down in that area trying to do some coverage and trying to encourage people. And she thought, what is it like to be in the midst of everything that's going on? Let me try to stop and, and uh, you know, help this person board up the window and you just had roving mobs at the time, and um, people saw her and started to move towards her. Were they going to do anything to her? I don't know, but she felt uh, terribly um, unsafe, and so she got in the car and rolled. Well, that made it look like she was just there for a quick photo op. She was actually trying to get to safety, but she's been canceled, and there are other people that I flat out disagree with, absolutely disagree with, they've been canceled. They lose their job, they lose their reputation. It's, it's like a witch hunt and it's awful. I mean, it's just awful. And may we as Christians never participate in a cancel culture, ever. Uh, especially if we slander or spread false reports about someone, I mean, that's in direct violation of the uh, second table of the law, that is the last six commandments where we are not loving neighbor, we're attacking neighbor, we're lying about neighbor, we're spreading false reports, etc. cetera. Uh, there's just no excuse for that in the name of, quote, revolution or in the name of social change or whatever. Uh, you're, you're a citizen of the kingdom of Christ first. And we need to remember that as Christians. Well, what does the cancel culture have to do with Revelation 3, 5? Revelation 3, 5 again, you know, says to the one who overcomes and wears white garments, I will um, not blot out his name from the book of life. And blot out is another way of saying I will not cancel. I will not cancel his name. I will not take it out from the book of life. The book of life is referenced many times uh, in the Psalms, um, to Moses, and then uh, a few times in the book of Revelation. And it is a book that contains the names of God's elect from all eternity. And so it is the book of, the book of life, not the book of humanity, not the book of life and death, of heaven and hell, uh, but the book of life. And so this is, um, as I said, the, the name of God's redeemed from all eternity. And to the one who overcomes and is dressed in white garments, in, in context there in Revelation, to be dressed in white garments is to be dressed in the righteousness of Christ. In fact, I'll say that that's the context throughout Scripture. Uh, we are to have our filthy garments taken off and to have the pure garments put on us. And the pure garments are um, garments of righteousness. The garments represent righteousness. And the only garment that we could ever dream of putting on that would make us presentable in God's sight is the righteousness of Christ. And so basically what Revelation chapter 3 is saying as it's starting to get into uh, the entire apocalyptic vision is there's a lot of bad stuff coming, but the one who is dressed in my son's righteousness, speaking as the father, you will never have your name blotted out of the book of life. It's impossible to have your name blotted out. Now, can someone have their name in there and then have it removed? No, uh, not at all. It's the name of God's elect. And in John chapter 10, Jesus says, what my father has given me is greater than all else, referring to the redeemed. And no one, no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hands. So, we cannot lose our salvation. When it says that your name will not be blotted out, it's not even hinting that, you know, be careful because your name could be blotted out. It's rather uh, encouraging the believer. You're going to go through a lot of hard, hard stuff. To put it in today's context, who knows when someone's going to come after you, especially when we just seem to have uh, internet mobs you know, trolling 
and seeming to attack people. Uh, who knows when that'll happen? I, I know I uh, had posted something a while ago uh, articulating my opinion, saying, hey, let's, let's be careful with scientific numbers because there are biases that go into the science uh, and the data that we choose to input to come up with certain um, uh, conclusions. And I, it was during the, the height of the, you know, the onset of coronavirus when the CDC seemed to be changing their numbers fairly frequently. And uh, some scientists from Stanford uh, were inputting different data and coming up with different numbers. And I said something to the effect of, these are both very intelligent scientists and they're coming up with very different conclusions. I'm more convinced by the people of Stanford than I am by the CDC at the time, um, probably still am. And I said, you have your scientists, I have mine, let's stop ripping each other apart. Well, I actually a former student when I used to teach took that thankfully didn't put my name on it but copied and pasted it on her page and said here's an example of someone who should be shut down and posted everything and said uh, this is why their speech should be taken away this um, uh, this is going to do nothing but hurt people etc. Well, I didn't get into an internet, you know, bric-a-brac with the person because I thought, what's the point? But I thought, you, you didn't come to me. You didn't talk to me. You just copied my stuff, pasted it, and took it out of context and then said, here's an example of someone who should be shut down. What if they got a hold of my name? What if there's just one person on there that got a hold of my name? I'm not hard to find if you do a public search. Found out where I live. Didn't like what I wrote. Now, what I wrote was fairly benign. But what if they didn't like it and decided to take action? That's the world we live in today. I mean, it's... it's I, I obviously blocked the person. They can't see my, my posts anymore. Uh, but that's the world we live in. And who knows what we're going to be facing here, whether it's something like that or something more serious. But it doesn't matter what we face because our names will never, ever, ever be blotted out of God's book. We won't be canceled. Why? Because we are wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. And if you are in the Father's hands by virtue of his grace through faith in Christ alone, you are safe forever and will never be canceled. So thank you very much for tuning in. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for being sovereign in this crazy, crazy world. Thank you for not calling us out when we make mistakes. Uh, Lord, we are just absent of any hint of even common dignity in much of our conversations that are happening. It is so easy to hide in your home behind a little screen and just go on the attack as if we are experts on all things. I'm no expert on infectious diseases. I'm no expert on how to solve uh, social issues. Uh, I've seen people I highly admire say there's such a thing as systemic racism and others say systemic. No, I don't think so. Uh, but there is racism. Uh, all I know is that there is racism because of the human heart, and so we're all to blame. And there is a virus out there that is hurting people and killing people and making people sick because of life in this fallen world. I know the big categories, Lord, but I don't have all the answers and neither do any of us. So give us humility. And Lord, no matter what we face as Christians, May we face it knowing that we are wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. That's where our identity is. Not in what cause we stand for. Not in how loud we are. But whether or not we are in Christ. And I thank you that we are. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.
All right. Well, thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow.